This sweet, sweet little video is protected by fair use. It is not for profit. It is for free. It is for the purposes of criticism and commentary and teaching about Freemasonry. Masons. The Masons. The Masons. The Masons. My masonry? My, 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 my construct? My, my masonry? Please like this video if you enjoy my content. It takes half a second. Hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel, this channel and El Diablo channel, and Crimes of Beauty. I'm not sure what channel this is going to be posted on. If it isn't on the Sanity Machine, check out the Sanity Machine. Make sure that you're on all of my channels because there's a lot of content that you might be missing out on. The video is for mature audiences only. It probably will contain some strong language, some adult language. Viewer discretion is advised. And I am a fucking mad Viking artist. <laughs>Hey guys, can y'all hear me and see me okay? Somebody give me a yes or a thumbs up, anything, so I know I'm coming through and we can get started. Anybody? There we go. Thank you, Max. Um, I'm going to answer a question real quick. I'm not going to belabor this point or go over a lot of it just because, hey, Lila. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that I want to cover tonight, talk about tonight. Um, I just got back from Colorado where I did the talk for the Masonic Lodge. Um, and it was a very interesting experience. And I got a lot of stuff I want to go into about that with y'all. That's why I called this uh, live stream Freemasonry, because there's a lot of stuff um, I want to cover about that, talk about that. Uh, but I saw Max and Hayden Williams were talking about two different versions of the Quabalistic Cross. And I've talked about this on here before, and I've done both of them for extended periods of time. And I've experienced differences depending on which one you do. You can do either one. I mean, that's what you're supposed to be doing ultimately is trying both of these things. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this video by saying months ago, early on with my channel, I made a video about Freemasonry. I've made a few on Freemasonry in less than a year. A few videos just on that. But touching on various things, including who runs Freemasonry. But a Freemason got pissed off. They must have found the video in a search or YouTube recommended it. I'm not sure. But I think it was a 32nd degree Freemason that claimed to be a Master Mason. And he came over to my channel, was trying to defend Freemasonry. I started talking about the creepy shit they do and, you know, insider knowledge. I'm not a Freemason, but I have knowledge of what goes on inside of temples, lodges, inside of the coffins, rituals, all that kind of stuff. So I know, and I called him out on certain things. He got really pissed off Was you know, <laughs> he got triggered. So I, I had I had fun triggering a Freemason that came over to my channel. Just like years ago, I had fun triggering many Freemasons on Facebook. So I've triggered them all over the internet, basically. Wherever I go, I leave a trail of triggered Freemasons with their stupid fez hats, the Shriner ones. He wasn't a Shriner, he was only a 32nd degree. You gotta be 33rd, honorary 33rd degree, Freemason and above to be a Shriner. Can't be in the Shriners if you're just a 32nd or lower. So anyway, but I have triggered them and their stupid cars and, and I will trigger them in person. And if I shake their hands, I'll do a Freemasonic handshake and I'll say, just, just kidding. I wouldn't join your club of losers. <laughs> but, uh, I, I love to trigger the shit out of them. And that's how I treat evil. I laugh at them. I trigger them. I mock them. I make fun of them. I make them into a joke. I tell them they're clowns and everything else. That's what I do. 
That's what I do. I tell them that their magic is weak, that I'm more powerful, I'm a sorcerer, and they're just weaklings and they're followers and they're groupthink and they're creeps and weirdos and they get naked in a coffin and jerk off and everybody's watching them. They do all this stupid gay, namas gay shit. And I just tease the shit out of them. I emasculate them. I do everything that you, everything under the sun that you can think of. Okay? But anyway, 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 let's, let's calm it down, people. So who's Damien Eccles? Does the, does his name sound familiar? Excuse me, I'm, I'm, I had a big dinner and then I'm guzzling down this Coke Zero, this chemical mess in the black and red satanic can, of course. It's how it's packaged, and that's what it is. Those are sat That's the satanic combo colors. It is powerful, though. I understand why they use that color combination. But, uh... You know who, uh... Sorry, while well, I was scrolling down, just... Do you know who Damien Eccles is? The name will be familiar to some people. Okay? There's a big story about him and some other boys. I think it was in Arkansas. See here. Here we are here on the Google images. The Google images. Here is Johnny Depp with Damien Eccles and they share ink. They get tattoos when they see each other. Okay? Here he is. He says that magic, with a K at the end, written Crowley style, and Crowley is someone that he followed since he was young. He says that magic saved his life. Spent a long time in prison. Long time in solitary, without daylight, it affected his vision. So, changed his vision. With depth. I don't know what's true in terms of whether he did the crime. I can't even mention many details on my YouTube channel about the crime. But have you ever heard of it? Okay. West Memphis 3. Him and two other boys were convicted. And one was very low IQ. This woman fought for him to be least there is a female obsession with true crime definitely many many women are obsessed with it is he innocent or is he guilty i don't know i don't know Tricky realm, and I have not studied the case well enough to know. Does this say Hellfire Club? Yeah, it does say Hellfire Club with the devil horns. I think Benjamin Franklin was part of the Hellfire Club, if memory serves me. And my memory should serve me, because I'm not a slave to my memory. It's, it should do what I want. And I might make a video on memory sometime, how strange it is in this realm. Think of how foggy your memory is of certain events when you were, let's say, nine years old, and 30 years later, if you're 39 how much it's faded, how strange it is, this place.
ritual, potential grimoire. Is Damien Eccles dark figure? I would say, yeah. Is he guilty of that crime? Again, I don't know. I don't know. I see a lot of symbols here that I do recognize on his body. And there's the double cross, the satanic cross right there with the infinity symbol and the double cross. Okay? This is an occult pose right here. Sometimes you'll see ones in Hollywood using this same pose. This is also an occult pose right here, pointing to the temple, saying that I'm enlightened, I have knowledge, I have occult knowledge, esoteric, hidden knowledge. Okay? And here's an Egyptian Ankh right there on his forearm tattoo that jumps out at me. I'm not going to go through all of his symbols, all of his tattoos in this. It's not about that. I'm just giving you a bit of background before I jump into his video talking about him speaking at a, uh, to Freemasons at a lodge. Showing that this guy has been... That's a Freemasonic gesture right there. The chin. So, is he schooled in esoterica and magic? Yes, he is, definitely. He's not a poser. He knows, he, he, he has knowledge. I've watched a bit of his stuff on YouTube to, to figure out, is this guy just fake? Is he a poser or does he have some knowledge? I think these, uh, using a Crowley pose right here, this is familiar to me. It's another... It's a pose used by certain dark occultists, we'll say, right here. And that, of course, that is a six, but I think there's a photo, a photo of Aleister Crowley doing that, I believe. Yeah, there you go. It's right there. Not quite identical. But it's very close, mirrorism. All right? That just popped up right when I needed it. Uh, what else was I going to show? I haven't really looked through these, so I am as curious as you are about what's going to show up on Google. By the way, a lot, if not most, if perhaps even almost all of Hollywood, is into this stuff to an extent. Does it mean that they're into it to the same degree that Damien Eccles is or Johnny Depp? No. Some are far less into it. They're more into their fame. But they'll do things to get more fame and more money. So here's their mug shots. I'm sure most people, I can't really go into what they were accused of and, and convicted of and spent time in prison. But this is the one... Jesse, that has the low IQ. They tested him. I guess his IQ was well below average in the sing not single digits, sorry, double digits. It's not in the triple digits. And uh, I guess they tried to use him to convict the other two. Anyway, um, guilty or not, this guy's an interesting character, you could say, an interesting figure, you might say. Is tatted up with so much, so much esoteric symbolism, including Viking right here. Nordic stuff here. 
which is part of magic. It's a lot, a uh, bit of an interesting hairstyle there. Look where he is here. Backdrop. That. What happened between him and, I think he married the woman that campaigned to get him released. And I don't think they're married anymore, so I don't know. I really haven't looked into his whole life story, but... Johnny Depp is very good friends with Marilyn Manson. And he's posing here with Manson. All right? And Manson is part of the Church of Satan. And this is coded here. This tattoo and with Depp's. They match up somehow. not going to play code breaker in this video but these do match up they're not identical they're not meant to be okay they're meant to fit together like puzzle pieces if you get what i'm saying sorry people i'm trying to i'm trying to teach you something here <laughs> i'm saying that a bit tongue in cheek i love saying stuff like that this is the sign of silence this is a esoteric Meaning, it means sign of silence, whether it's one finger shh, or multiple fingers. This is more the way Johnny Depp has done it. So he's kind of using Depp's way of, of doing it. But that's what that is. That's shh, I won't tell the secrets. So is he initiated? Based on what I can see, yeah, he is. He's not just a magician. Here's another pose. Okay is a dark occultist and he's showing you in many many ways in this photo shoot every which way that you can think of from here all of it here look at the hands and the fingers the position up here onto this shoulder and then the fingers okay think of it this way for the people that don't understand or shaking their heads or some people they they don't get it or they you know they get triggered by this they don't like it or they say, what are, you, what are you talking about? Oh, you would understand if you were in East L.A. and gang members were doing this. You'd say, well, those are gang signs. Yeah, so are these. It's not the same thing as a street gang, but it is a club. Okay? And they use gang signs. You can call them gang signs. You can call them dark occultist signs, esoteric signs. This looks like a dragon here wrapped around there. All right? That, I'm not sure what that's... I'd like to know what that symbol is underneath the barcode style symbol here. There's a lot more ink now than back then in these photos. Thumbs up here. I've seen Hollywood um, celebrities that are initiated, we'll, we'll say, do a similar pose. I, I wasn't meaning to spend a whole lot of time on this. I've spent quite a bit already. Arkansas, West Memphis 3. You can Google some of this yourself if you want to know about what they were accused of doing, a lot of it is things I cannot say on YouTube. It's, you know, whoever did those crimes were evil. Okay?
got to say, this is not just coincidence or I don't know how to pose. That is very intentional and has a very specific meaning. Okay? I'm <laughs> now I'm kind of getting wrapped up in this stuff, the tarot cards, and I'm not into that. I'm just saying I'm looking at these images, and I find this stuff interesting and fascinating to study, to analyze. But my video is really not about this. Okay, scroll down quickly, and I'm going to go back to his video. But I've given you something to think about, at least. Another example here. That is a dark occultist pose. I suspect maybe his wife is a witch or was a witch, maybe back then. But it wasn't just, oh, I know he's innocent, there's more to the story. That, oh, I have to fight for him, there's more to it. She was into something, okay? That's my suspicion. Here we are back here on his YouTube channel. YouTube puts this up as soon as you have Freemasonry in the title. I'm not sure what I'm going to title my video, but I, I might have Freemasonry and they can put the stupid little banner and link, right? Doesn't, I don't care about it. It doesn't annoy me. Much as it bothers some other YouTube channels. So the Freemason fans are coming over here. This one said they received their 32nd degree next week. Receiving my 32nd. Well, this was four hours ago. So. And figuring out which one is of more benefit to you, but one of them which is the first one that most people uh, are familiar with, you know, in like basic 101 books of ceremonial magic, pretty much any book out there on magic is going to tell you, like you draw, you visualize a light at the top of the universe and you reach up and you pull it down and you're vibrating Ate while you touch your forehead. Rambles on a bit. I'm going to jump forward and find something interesting. Most of them don't even understand. So, okay, so I go to Colorado and I meet uh, the man who brought me out there to do a talk for the Masons. And, and essentially what the talk, what, what the subject matter of the talk was going to be was how magic and Masonry overlap, how they're attempting to accomplish the same thing. Those of you in the Magnum Opus group, y'all know what we've talked about before. My brain just went blank. This is what I mean. I'm, I'm really struggling tonight, guys. Bear with me. Oh, we've talked about how what we're doing when we do the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram is creating the union of the circle and the square. The circle represents heaven. The square represents earth or the material realm. We're uniting those two things 
and how in Catholic and Greek Orthodox cathedrals you see this same information encoded in the architecture. When you walk in and you see the bottom where the congregation sits is a square and you look up at the dome and the ceiling and it's uh, a half a circle symbolizing that the circle has merged with the square, the union of the circle and the square. Same way in the Masonic logo, you know, the G with the compass above it and the square below. A compass is what you use to draw a circle. The square is what you use to draw a square. So even the Masonic logo is, is showing you the union of the circle and the square. That's the kind of thing they were wanting me to talk about. Sorry for jumping in so quickly, but I have something to show you with that. So Solomon's Temple is linked with Freemasonry, right? Solomon's Temple and the pillars, BJ, blowjob pillars, B and J. And also, within the compass in the square is this symbol right here, the seal of Solomon. You see that? Solomon's seal <clears throat> is the compass, part of the compass in the square is right in there. The Freemasonry is absolutely linked to, that's who runs it and that's who formed it. All right? And it has the as above, so below reflection right in there. There's so much in that symbol. But you see how that's a compass and square and it has that seal there? Star, right? One thing. So the square and the circle merging together, what do they call the ring in wrestling? They always call it the squared circle. And a lot of people would say, well, Stephen, or say whoever, they, they might even say Vince McMahon. Hey, Vince, how come it's called the squared circle when it's a, the ring is a square? But where's really the circle? You know? Yeah, that's what it is. Is it connected with Freemasonry? Absolutely. Is baseball the diamond, the baseball diamond? Yeah. Sports? Yeah, run by Freemasons. Absolutely. 100%. Sisterhood of the Squared Circle. They've been calling it the Squared Circle forever with wrestling. magazine covers, you name it. It's always been known as that. I remember uh, Gorilla Monsoon saying the squared circle when I was a child watching wrestling on TV. Okay? Okay, so who's the biggest wrestling company, multi-billion dollar company? Well, of course, it's WWE, right? This is various logos from fans and from, you know, WrestleMania. There's the bell. There's the Freemasonic bell right there. But if you turn this on its side, it's three and a three. It's a 33. Just flip it, rotate it, and it's a 33. And Vince McMahon is a 33rd degree or higher Freemason. And he's a billionaire. You don't get to be a billionaire in this world without being a high degree Freemason. That's how it works. And for the people that want to argue, you don't understand how it works. It's really that simple. It used to be WWF, 
but now it's WWE, right? Flip it. It's a three and a three. It's 33. That's what it is. 33. All right, one more thing before I get back to his video. I've shown this various times in other videos. The sports leagues. Red and blue of Freemasonry. And no, it doesn't mean, oh, it's just red, white, and blue it's of America. No, it's because it's Freemasonic. They put it right in front of you, hidden in plain sight. I might make a video sometime just on logos in the hidden meanings of logos, not just of sports, but of corporations and all sorts of shit in this world. Logos have meanings. And showing you something. And red and blue of the red and blue Freemasonic lodges, right in the big sports leagues, they control the, the leagues and they fix the games. All right, they can fix any fucking game they want in any sport they want. Okay? And that's how it works. Look at this. Do you notice a pattern there with red and blue? The red and blue lodges of Freemasonry. Because they could have chosen any colors. They didn't have to follow along. From figure skating to car racing, indie racing, to USA wrestling... Major League Gaming, Major League Baseball, the NBA, on and on and on. Okay, red and blue. The same red and basically the same blue are very close to it every time. So you better think about it. Better think about it for the people to say, wow, Masons, what is he talking about? I'm talking about low-level Masons. I'm talking about the top-level Masons. The Black Lodge Masons at the very fucking top. How magic and masonry overlap and how they're basically... To show you this again, how magic and masonry overlap, and of course they do, and, and uh, Freemasonry and uh, Judaism overlap and and Christianity, and it just goes on and on and on. But, you know, for the dummies on my, my channel that are brand new and come here and say, well, I heard you're a Freemason and you use these symbols in your artwork, you know, y you shouldn't even be handed this information because I give you real knowledge. I share real knowledge and I expose Freemasonry more than anyone on YouTube. And you don't deserve it, those ones, those paranoid, fucking stupid truth or sheep. You don't deserve knowledge. That's the kind of thing they were wanting me to talk about. How magic and masonry overlap and how they're basically doing the same thing and you find the same information in both traditions. I spent a lot of time with these guys over the past several days, a lot of time, like one day alone, I think I was with, with them for like 12 hours. These were probably the most knowledgeable people I have ever been in the company of when it comes to this information. These, these people understood all of this stuff. Perhaps even even more so than I I do. So do I think he's telling the truth there? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And for the ones on YouTube that are trying to deceive you, they'll try to make you believe that Freemasons don't know anything, and that it's all just bullshit. And you know, it's just these guys getting together to drink in a lodge, or you know, business contacts, and they just it, it is part of dark occultism and magic on a deep, deep level. They are not independent magicians. They work together. 
as a brotherhood. They call themselves brother this, brother that. You know, brother John, brother Jake, brother David, brother whoever. That's what they do, all right? And they work as a unit. In other words, they are united in their goals for this realm and for you as part of the population. A lot of fucking idiots on YouTube that when somebody tries to expose them or share knowledge about this stuff, they dismiss it, they slough it off, they make fun of it, they say, well, there's a Freemason, broken down Freemason Lodge here in Florida or Mississippi or somewhere in the south, out in the backwoods. Yeah, that's, that's, you, you don't understand how it fucking works, the hierarchy. You don't understand. You're like a hick that's trying to understand something that's just beyond you. I'm not saying that just to demean people. I get so tired of that, though. I understand why there's a lot of people that don't share high-level knowledge on YouTube because there's so many idiots that come around. There truly are hundreds, hundreds of them. Don't ban the trash. Your channel will just be taken over by trash. That's what happens. High-level Freemasons know more about you and magic and how this realm works and how magic works, and how astrology works, and how your psychology works, than you do, for the most part. The most people that will ever watch a video like this, and that's on my channel, on the low-level channels on YouTube, they don't stand a chance. Because they don't look into anything. They just talk out of their ass. They talk bullshit. And they repeat bullshit that they heard. They don't really look deeply into things. They don't have minds to look deeply into things. They're following Matt McKinley's channel or some bullshit like that or a really graceful channel or Take a Leak Project channel or some Santos fucking idiot uh, Bonacci channel, you know. People understood all of this stuff. Perhaps even even more so than I I do. You know, we talk about a lot of Masons, how they just join for like the fraternal aspect of it. They just want to hang out and smoke cigars and enjoy, you know, hanging out with other guys once a month or what have you. And you do have, honestly, probably the vast majority of them. That's what they do. They're not in any great conspiracy to take over the world or anything else. You know, all the things that people accuse them of, how they're controlling the world. These people aren't controlling, you know, much of anything. They just like to get together and smoke cigars with their friends once a month and have fun. They don't understand any of the, any of the stuff that we usually talk about. That's not the case of the men that I have spent the past several days with. They knew a lot. One of the things that they wanted to talk to me about was writing. And I'm going to show you all kinds of things I got from them and, and tell you. Max says porch masons, they call those folks. Uh, I heard somebody else, well, Derek, Derek calls them checkbook masons. You know, Masons that just write their checks every, you know, every time membership dues are required um, just to be part of a social group, that sort of thing. These men were not porch Masons, as Max said. They were not uh, checkbook Masons. These were very, very knowledgeable individuals. Very. So one of the things they asked me about First off, they were talking to me about becoming a member, a member of, and you have all different, you have a bunch of different orders that all meet kind of under the Masonic banner. 
You have the Knights Templar. You have members of the, uh, what's it called, the Ellis Cohen. The Shriners. All of these are people that are under the banner of, of Masonry in one way or another. So one of the things they were talking to me about, and what I want to read to y'all tonight, and why I call this stream Masonry, is they actually publish some magazines uh, called Esoteric Mason. And there's all kinds of information in these things that is absolutely amazing um, and that I want to get into. I'm going to comb through these things and see what is a benefit to share with y'all. Yeah, they are. They're really great covers. Lila says great covers. Yes. Yeah, so this one is uh, got an article in it on Pasquale, Jesus Christ, the Exorcist, Hermeticism and Proto-Christianity. I'm going to pause it just for a second here, or just for a minute. Uh, Jesus Christ, the Exorcist, Jesus Christ, if he was a real person and not fictional, was a master mason. And I've shown that in previous videos on my channel. Hermeticism and... So for the ones that say, well, the masons are against Jesus and all of the quote, as, as, as uh, newbie truthers or truther sheep call them, all of the quote elite mock Jesus, you don't get. It's right here, Jesus Christ, the exorcist. They have a Bible in every Freemasonic lodge and temple from here to New Zealand. Do you understand this? From Canada, United States to, to New Zealand and Australia. All over this realm, everywhere. They're not against the Bible. They might have dumbasses thinking that, Christians. Christians, the stupid, lowly idiots that don't know what's going on. But here's the real truth. They're very cool with Jesus Christ, but they know a little bit more than you do, you dumb Christians. Okay? They know a deeper level, an esoteric level. This is Dark Occultism, Esoteric Mason, this magazine. That's what it's about. I don't have to agree. I mean, there's dummies that disagree all the time. There's, there's dummies that disagree with no knowledge all the time. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. I'm going to show you a magazine. Instead of Esoteric Mason, I'm going to show you something here. Fire Mass, Issue 5. Buy it in print for 17 bucks, or you can view the digital version for free. And I do happen to have a print copy of this, which I got for free, because I'm published in this issue. This was a while ago, okay? But when they said about the cover being beautiful, this is beautiful in person. That's not my artwork, by the way. I'm published in writing in this. This was years ago. And I, in my writing, my poetry because they publish uh, dark literature, horror, magic, artwork, visual, and poetry, okay, dark literature. And mine is in here. My longer pieces of poetry is in here. Maybe I'll scroll through this quickly. I can't remember what page my work is on, but here's my name right here, Stephen R. Killeen, Stephen Rasputin Killeen. It's right here, it's right here. <laughs> anyway, um, it's an interesting magazine. It's a lot of dark artwork. After American Gothic, remember that? The two farmers. So they that's their take on it.
Now there's a lot of dark artwork in this. This is written in blood, the art of Vincent. He makes artwork with his blood. What can I tell you? That's made out of blood. That's blood. That's blood. That's blood. That's blood. So it's a... Uh, I knew Bianca, I didn't really know her, just online, just like through a chat room. And I knew some other artists and stuff back in these days, earlier 2000s. Cool work. Love this owl piece. By Bianca. Some of her photography. And this is by Stephen R. Killeen, a madman poet, wrote this piece. So I wanted to show you this because um, this has some cool artwork and it's not Freemasonic. And I think in one of their earlier issues, they, they published something by Clive Barker, the horror writer, the guy uh, involved with movies and that kind of stuff, but my my poem was really not about horror. You'd have to read it to understand. I was going to say you'd have to read it to understand it, but of course there's people like Drew that would read it and say that not understand it at all and just say he's he's nuts, he's nuts, he's nuts. That's all they do. They don't understand things. So when I say about understanding things on a deeper level, I mean uh, we're not all the same. We're not all equal in this realm. Some people have a deeper understanding of things in this realm and beyond this realm. Beyond this realm. Unseen realms. Okay? He's a demon, mate. He's a demon. I had to do that. I'm not a demon, obviously, but these these ignorant morons that do that it'll always be that way in this world it's just like a bunch of zombies in high school pointing at somebody oh look at him he reads books he's 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 weird or he's crazy cuz he reads all these books and they're all the dummies the, the low iq morons zombies are pointing at somebody he's different he reads books that's it's still like that in this realm you know he's different he writes poetry he writes things he he paints things he draws things that i don't understand he must be demonic. That's how fucking stupid the average truther sheep is in this realm. All over this realm, that's the average. That's the level they're at. Pathetic. 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 Back on YouTube again, I just want to say don't... Well, you can buy it if you want to, if you're curious. It's up to you, but I'm just saying if you want to buy something... Um, Another magazine, that's the one I would recommend checking out. Or it's one of them. And it's not just because my work is published in it, but I mean, uh, I wouldn't publish my work in a somewhere that isn't high quality, if you get what I'm saying. I didn't submit it there. She just asked me if I wanted to be part of it. So I was kind of invited, like, hey, Stephen, I've read your work. I've read some of your poetry. Would you like to contribute a piece to this issue? So that's how that happened. But uh, that's another thing about YouTube. People will mock you for everything. They're just, they're just idiots. You try to get your work published somewhere where there's high-end artists and writers. and Just try it. Just try it. See how, much you, see how much luck you have with that. These morons that bash me for, say, you know, for being published here and there. And, you know, and then they think I run everything. Oh, I don't know if he runs this magazine or... Yeah, I own everything. That's why. Nobody would publish me. I just own all this stuff. I own this too, by the way. I own this magazine, Esoteric Mason. So, I mean, they're just fucking stupid. The low level of truth or sheep on YouTube is just so pathetic. It's really so pathetic. It truly is. That's what that Brett Bender said about one of my pieces. I don't know if he runs this magazine. Yeah, I live in, uh, I live in the UK. I live in Great Britain and, and I, 
you know, I run Asylum Magazine, and I also run Esoteric Mason, and there's a whole bunch of magazines. Maybe I'll get published in this one, and then he'll say, well, does he run this magazine? i are just fucking stupid. I don't think I could be published in this. It's probably Freemasons only. That's what I'm guessing, but who knows? Proto-Christianity. Uh, there's astrology in the Zohar. Um, letterist techniques to rectify ill fortune. Mescaline and the magicians. Intro into the Tatvas. Your own personal demon. The, the Your Own Personal Demon article is about the Holy Guardian Angel. There's an entire article in here about attaining the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. And that's straight from Crowley. Your Holy Guardian Angel, never quote, never insult your angel. That all, all that stuff comes right out of Alistair Crowley. O-T-O. Crowley. And for the people that are new here that don't know who I'm talking about, think of the old Ozzy Osbourne smash hit song. Mr. Crowley. Remember that one? <laughs> Mr. Crowley. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, had to, I gotta bring some silliness into this. We're, we're into some pretty dark stuff. That's uh, Day of the Dead, Sugar Skull Face painted right there. All right. Most laughable thing to me. Oh, man. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it, the Shady Bunch stuff, but they really don't know what the hell they're talking about. They don't get it. They don't understand. They just don't understand. Remember that old song by the Steve Miller band? Abra, Abra, Kadabra. Wanna reach out and grab ya. Some people would say, well, Abra, Kadabra, that's silly. That's like pulling a bunny out of a magician's hat. No, that's real. That's real. Abracadabra is real, a real magical word. In a hit song from way back. So some people are probably saying, Stephen, no way. That's not a magical word or an incantation. That's just bullshit. No, it isn't. It isn't bullshit. First recorded in a Latin medical poem. Dr. Medicina Precepta, 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 sorry. So, Abracadabra Verded Pyramid amulet around their neck inscribed this way and it is from the Aramaic phrase Avra Kadabra meaning I will create as I speak in other words speak something into creation speak it into existence you understand and it says that in the Bible. First was the word, right? Chaldean perished like the word. You can laugh and say, well, wait a second. Look at this. J.K. Rowling um, did study magic, by the way. Okay, so a lot of people want, they claim they want truth, they claim they want understanding. That requires some work, some effort, thinking. If you're not willing to think, you're not going to understand. And you don't have to understand. Not everyone's going to understand this. I accept that fully. I understand that. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. Okay, John 1.1. 1, 1. See how that relates to abracadabra and the word creating? Okay. This is magic. This is magic on your screen out of the Bible. People don't understand that. Christians don't understand that. They don't understand. That's magic. It's the same as magic. Kinley would say, quoting from a movie, identical. Identical. Maybe I'll put it that way. Maybe that'll reach people that way. Identical. There's no difference between that and abracadabra and magic and using magical phrases. It's the same thing. in a Masonic magazine. They were asking me if I would write for this magazine. I don't know if he's going to talk about it, but I'm going to show this. And I just saw there. Right there is the lion that Freemasons use. It's almost exactly the same one that Lion Sword used on his YouTube channel before I pressured him to change it and then he drew another one. Okay, but yeah, that's what he used originally. And it is Freemasonic right there. Made a lot of changes due to me. I mean, th these channels are run by me basically. Not officially, of course, unofficially. But I pull their strings. So people that don't understand, they're, they're scratching their heads or thinking, is he colluding with them? No, they're they're puppets for me, basically. They don't like it. But I make them dance. I wind them up. It's like wind-up toys, and I put them on strings, and they're puppets. They do what I want. When I want them to take down their content and their whole everything off their channel and clean house, they do it. Just like he did with the Unknown Apostle channel after I exposed him. Just like Charles, we P33 did, and others have done. Do you understand this? Do you understand this yet? Do you understand? They're not powerful. I am. Do you understand that I can go right into their dreams at night and haunt them? And I already have. And they know this. It's not just me saying this. They know this. They know this to be true. They know this to be true. If I would write for this magazine. Well, one of the things I wanted to read to y'all tonight, and the reason I'm bringing up all the Bible stuff, is there's an article, and also another one of them is called Rocky Mountain Mason. And the man who was responsible for contacting me and bringing me out is actually the publisher of the Rocky Mountain Mason. His name is Ben Williams. You can see his picture right there. It's Ben. And this magazine is an article called Encountering the 24-inch Gauge in the Old Testament. And it goes, the gauge, that's a picture of a gauge right there. It's a Masonic tool. Looks kind of like a following ruler. And I'm going to get into it in just a minute. I'm going to read you, if not the whole article, chunks of it. Because there's some really, really great stuff about biblical symbolism as it relates to relationships in here. And this is what we're going to get into. This is the, the, the meat of what we're going to be talking about tonight. But I just want to show you a couple of other things that they gave me. Um, so one of the things in here, and you can even, 
I'm not sure if they still have these or not, if you're interested in getting one. But in Volume 3 of Esoteric Mason, and there's a lot of really great stuff in here, uh, Tubal Cane, Metallurgy and Masonry, um, Hunt for the Skinwalker, Why Weight Was Wrong to Change the Elements. And so there is, in, in this one, let me show you. There's an, this, there's an article called, Wait, Wait, Don't Play with Fire. So there is an entire article in this one on uh, A.E. Weight and changes he made in the tarot. So we're going to get into that. Well, I want to show you one of the things that they gave to me. This is handmade. This is a Knights Templar rosary. You can see that. You see it's got the Templar cross. Trying to pause it on and something where crucifix. there's the Templar cross, the rosary, um, showing you the link between Christianity, Knights Templar, and Freemasonry. There's a rosary, and people deny this. People deny that they're related or connected. They don't understand. They just don't understand. And I'm including, you know, Christians, which make up what a third. Christianity dominates like around a third of the of the believers in a quote God in this earth are Christian. They don't understand any of this. Any of this, they don't understand. Make it crystal clear for you, for everyone on my channel and beyond. Crystal clear, of course, is CC. Crystal clear, 33. But anyway, I did that on purpose. Uh, put it this way. These dummies on other channels say that they're Christian, and I say, no, you're not. You don't understand what Christianity is. They argue, these live streams. All right? And they say, well, Christianity, it just means to be a Christian that I believe in Jesus as my Savior. Well, Christianity is tied in with Knights Templar and Freemasonry and uh, Satanism and Freemasonry is run by Jews, Judaism, it's all one and the same and connected with Islam too, by the way. Judaism, Freemasonry, Islam, it's all Christianity, it's all connected. Knights Templar and also Knights of Malta and uh, Knights of the Garter, it's all connected. You don't understand how this realm works. You don't have a fucking clue about religion. Most people on this earth walking around don't have a clue, including Christians. They don't know what Christianity is. So they'll point at Freemasonry and say, that's evil, that's bad. Well, that, that's running your fucking religion, dummy. You know, you don't get it. You don't get it. The profane masses, the unwashed idiots, the fools, gutters, It's a temp. And instead of a crucifix, it's a Templar cross. It's made of sterling silver, and the beads are of hematite. Sterling silver and hematite. Crucifix, it's a Templar cross. It's made of sterling silver, and the beads are of hematite. Sterling silver and hematite. But this is a Knights Templar rosary. And they actually made a limited number of these. I don't know if they're still available or not, but there's like an, a little thing uh, in, in this version of the magazine. Um, in hoc signo vences, it means in this sign you will conquer, talking about the, the cross. But in, yeah, in this sign we will conquer, 
the Knights Templar. What was the main thing they conquered? The money system. The money system. People, people don't understand it. It's okay. It's okay. And I'm not being condescending. It's just that people defend Christians that defend all this shit. The cross predates Christianity. Okay? It's an ancient symbol. Way more ancient than just 2,000 years ago. Way more. Because the cross was up in the sky. So people saw that many, many thousands of years ago, if not potentially millions of years ago. Do you understand? I hope so. But it's up to you. Again, if you don't understand, that's fine too. It's fine by me. That's the way truth works. Not everyone's going to understand this, and I'm acutely aware of that. Not everyone will understand this stuff at all. At all. It's mind-boggling to them. Oh, Christianity's tied in with the Knights Templar and Freemasonry and Judaism runs Freemasonry, so it's all connected. And it also runs Islam, and that's why they have the same symbols on the Fez Shriner caps. Wow, it's all connected. The symbols show that it's all connected. Yeah, the symbols show you that it's all connected. The, the cross but in this one oh and let me see if you're interested in it you can go to it's called limited edition templar rosary and you can go to uh, www.laughinglion.net and you see laughing lion and there's a uh, lion swords old logo right there when i called him out is that being freemasonic and of course, people wanted to defend him right away, but there it is. Freemasonic lion, right there. You like that? That's the laughing lion. And lion sword is laughing at you, the ones that followed, followed him and defended him. Defended him when he was threatening me with violence and everything else, and you're defending him. Who do you think side you, I'm going to be on outside of this realm? You could stay here if you defend him. Get comfy. Get a nice comfy spot here in this room. All right? Does that sound crazy? I won't forget. You want to stand with them? Go ahead. But I'll remember. I showed you in videos many, many months ago. Where, what Lion Sword was using. He's rubbing your face in it on his channel. net and you see that's their little logo the laughing lion and i don't know if they still have more of these or not i'm not sure how long ago they made them but this was one they gave to me but they also gave me um the laughing lion you can see that it's a pin Derek lion sword Derek de carla should get one of those right Right? Right, Derek? Are you watching this? Somebody going to tell him to watch this? I know he has spies. Someone from TV, Team Evil, from the Shady Bunch, you going to tell Derek about this? It's his old logo right there. Here we are on laughinglion.net. There's the lion. Does that look familiar to... Lion Sword fans, Derek fans, uh, the Unknown Apostle, the Green Wizard, Ducky. He calls himself lots of things. Derek DiCarlo. It's his old logo for his Lion Sword channel. 
And right here, it's showing you Freemasonry and the church. <laughs> Look at this. A laughing lion Masonic primer. And here's the laughing lion with one of the keys. Okay? <laughs> Digital version's only two bucks. Look at that. I love Christians. Freemasonry's not part of the church. <laughs> they rub it right in your face. It's right here, Freemasonry and the church. It absolutely is part of the church. There's high-level priests, bishops, cardinals that are Freemasons. You don't have a clue. People that defend this shit, you don't have a fucking clue. By the way, I said it that way on purpose. They have not earned my respect. They don't deserve my respect. They're willfully ignorant, and they argue out of ignorance, which is sheer stupidity and laziness, and I don't respect that whatsoever, and I won't show them any respect. Littleton, Colorado. No surprise there. Littleton, Colorado. No surprise there, if you know what... If you know anything about this realm, I mean. Literature, menswear, masonry. The laughing lion right there. There's Derek's old logo for Lion Sword Channel, everyone. Remember? I pointed it out in videos and in memes that I posted on my channel. It takes a lot to get through to truthers, though. A lot. I, you know what? I, I, I don't know if I should say it this way, but like I don't think a lot of you learn very quickly. Uh, and I hope that you do learn, but I mean, it's frustrating, man, how slow people can be. Because nobody was tutoring me this way, pointing this stuff out and showing me and, you know, making all these videos to expose it and show me. Like, I can see on my own, and I'm wondering why you can't. Even when you're shown, you shake your heads. You still follow this fucking shit. You want to follow evil? Go ahead. It's two hundred fifty dollars for this laughing lion Templar rosary. All right. Oh man. Huh. Two hundred fifty dollars. And made in Italy, limited edition. Shipping is not included. It's most likely in U.S. dollars, so that's a lot of money. That's in 250 U.S. dollars is like three million in Canadian dollars. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money. It's a lot of money. In. See, he's holding the key, laughing. Laughing and holding the key, the laughing lion. You'll have more of these or not. I'm not sure how long ago they made them, but this was one they gave to me. But they also gave me um, the laughing lion. You can see that. It's a pin. See, he's holding the key. The laughing lion. It's a pin, enamel pin. Oops, that you can put on a jacket or, or what have you. But uh, key, the frequency key, the frequency key to the gates of knowledge, esoteric knowledge and spirituality. Okay. They feel like they have keys that you don't have that you won't work to study, that you won't look into or try to get. That's what they think. And yes, they do feel above you. They feel superior. And that's also why they'll use terms like Master Mason and Worshipful, or sorry, Worshipful. <laughs> worshipful Master. Stuff like that. All right?
what the laughing lion kind of represents. Let me show you a picture. What did I do with my phone? One second. Have you ever seen a, a picture of lions where it looks like they're laughing? Like people say that lions actually laugh like that. See them, they're laughing. Trying to get where the screen's not all white. There we go. They're laughing. So they say lions laugh and their arch enemy, the hyena, also laughs. But the laugh of the lion and the laugh of the hyena are very, very different laughs. The lion laughs because it's courageous and it's brave and it's just strolling through life. The hyena laughs, it's more of a snicker. You know, like a like a evil, cunning laugh. You know, it's looking to catch its prey when it's at its weakest or to steal from the lion or what have you. And we want to laugh like lions. Oh, I like to laugh like the hyenas, the spotted laughing hyenas. They get a bad rap. If they're raised from very young with a puppy, they're like a little pup. But they're like, they're very playful. Um, do you know that they have essentially the same sex organs? The female's vagina looks like a penis for the hyena. They give birth that way. It, they're very hard to tell apart, male and female hyenas. Um, they're very different animals. Um, they're, they run together in a big group, sometimes like a hundred or more. So it's not, it's bigger than a wolf pack. And they have to because they're very small and they don't have, um, teeth that can give the, the kill shot. So they basically have to devour stuff alive in groups and take it down and eat it alive that way. They have no other choice. They have to eat, but their laughter it's not sinister. It's not evil. They get a bad rap, just like crows and ravens do, and wolves. And I love the I love the ones that this world demonizes and vilifies and, and tries to give a bad reputation, because this world is full of stupid, ignorant followers that love to do that, and they don't know what the fuck they're talking about most of the time. Most of the time. I grew up as a boy visiting wolves all the time. I would go visit the wolves. And I still prefer the outcasts and the ones that this society tries to vilify and condemn for the most part. The truth seekers, the lone wolves. And often the most intelligent, hyenas are very intelligent, Ravens and crows are very intelligent, very playful. We want to be laughing lions because the world is filled with hyenas. Um, but other things they gave me. Let me show you this. This is a Knights Templar cross. You know, this goes on your altar, on your shrine. I'm trying to pause it when, there we go, the flower, the rosy cross. He's calling it a Knights Templar cross. And that looks very similar to the Rosicrucian, the rosy cross. Okay with the flower up there. Which is linked with Knights Templar and Freemasonry. They're all connected. People that think they're all separate and battling each other and, and enemies, not at all. Knights Templar, Freemasons, Knights of Malta, Rosicrucians. They're all essentially brothers and cousins, you might say. And sisters. Brothers and sisters and cousins. Females, too, are part of the secret society. Yeah, yeah. It's not just men. 
It's not just men. There's a lot of evil women at the top of the pyramid too, by the way. It's not a shocker. Some people, especially feminists that blame men for every evil in this world all the time. A lot of us men are sick of it. A lot of us men would lock you in here with demons. The, the man-hating feminists. You might not be doing yourselves any spiritual favors, we might say. We'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And I do laugh because I see a lot of things that are coming. There's the skull and bones. Skull and crossbones. You know, like Yale... 422, or sorry, 322, the skull and crossbones of pirates. It's right there. Right there on the cross. Christians would say, but Stephen, the cross is Christian. Look at the top. I mean, that that is a cross, okay? Christian, Catholic, Rosicrucian, Knights Templar, Freemasonry, skull and bones, you name it, it's all fucking the same thing. It's all connected. This right on his finger here, tattoo, is the cross. I don't know if that's a Celtic cross. I can't see, it's kind of in a shadow and it's not very showing up very well on my screen, but... On the back of it, see the little skull and crossbones at the bottom. That's the Knight Templar there. On the back of it, you can read it says Grand Commandery of Knights Templar, Colorado. It's very nice. It's really nice. Then there's also this. This is what I was showing you guys on the thumbnail. This is an illustration uh, used in the tradition of the Elois Elo Cohen. And let me read to you exactly what this, this group means, what this name means, what it signifies. Let me see. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. So to, to kind of tell you what this is, when you're looking at the tree of life and when you're looking at Aristotle's model of the universe, you're looking at the same. Okay, I'm going to explain some of it in my own words. Tree of life is right here. The Kabbalistic tree of life is shown here. And that's also Christ on the cross. So some people would be way off again, religious people. Well, Stephen, if that's Christ and the cross with his arms out, there and there you see his face and the body, the body of Christ with the Jesus Christ pose, the arms out. Kabbalah, isn't that Jewish? Jews don't believe in Jesus, Stephen. I mean, they don't understand the deeper levels of this stuff. They don't get it. They don't get it. They think it's all separate. And that's where they fool you, the masses. Okay, I, I, I'm not trying to put you down by calling you that, but that's the way it is, okay? You don't understand how this works at the very top levels and i'll say it again i've said it many times on my channel i've been trying to break through to some people for so many months here at the very top levels they are all one and then they preach oneness for you they want you as oneness for you would be slavery in oneness but at the very top the ones that understand all of this stuff understand it's all connected judaism christianity Kabbalah, Freemasonry, Knights Templar, uh, Knights of Malta, Islam, all connected. Okay, it's all connected. All of it. Okay, you got that? I really hope people get that. I really hope it sinks in and they finally have that realization. Yes, it is. Stephen showed me. He showed me the fucking proof. He didn't just say it. He showed me it in this video and in many other videos. It's all connected.
okay? Dummies that go to the temple and to the churches and wherever, the mosques and everything else, they don't understand. They don't get it. And the ones at the top want them ignorant. So for you say, why would they want them ignorant? Why would they want the Christian sheep ignorant? Why would they want the uh, the Muslims in ignorant? Why would they want the uh, the Jews in the temple ignorant? Why, Stephen, why? Because ignorance is slavery. They want you enslaved at the bottom. They don't give a shit about you. When did you? Wh where did you get the idea that they cared about you and want you to know anything? Like they lie to you constantly and fool you, deceive you. And then what do you? What do many of you do? You hate the people that try to show you. You hate ones like me. I'm not crying about it. I'm just it's saying it as a fact. Hundreds and hundreds of truthers hate me. Potentially thousands on here because I'm speaking truth. And truth is the last thing that the truther sheep want. They prefer comfortable ignorance and to be fed shit that tastes good, feels good. Go eat, of a, go eat out of a goddamn McDonald's uh, dumpster if that's what you want. Because I don't feed people that here. I feed you some real knowledge and tell you. He hasn't even explained this yet, and I just explained it. I haven't watched this far into his video till just now. But this is what it's showing you here. That's a part of what it's showing you. It's also showing you cosmic things in here. And that's the way they love to do things. And they love to use sacred ge geometry, sorry, with the circles and the cross here and all the triangles here and the pyramids. It's all measured out to certain measurements with the golden ratio and, you know, all that stuff. All the sacred geometries built into this. And thing. It's like a map of the territory. You know, I have, I've always told you that the tree of life worked for me to figure out exactly where I was and kind of map the experiences that I was having and the work that I needed to do to the tree of life up until I reached a certain point. And then Aristotle's model of the universe became more conducive to me understanding and keeping track of where I was in the work and all of that sort of stuff. This is another model of the universe, which is ultimately a model of you, not the external universe, but the internal universe this is a model of you. And if you notice at the bottom, which side is it on? It's on this side. It's actually signed by Nigel Jackson. And that little symbol right there, that represents the. So it kind of looks like almost like a four on top. It isn't a four and a double cross is built in and then a heart shape at the bottom. But it has the double cross right there. Where does the term double cross come from? Freemasonry. Where does the term to blackball someone come from? Freemasonry. Are you on the level with me? That comes from Freemasonry. Are all things fair and square? That comes from Freemasonry. I can go on, but that's what that's built into the mainstream vernacular, the mainstream language, and it's from directly from Freemasonry. Ancient. It didn't just start being used as common phrases these days. That's been for centuries and centuries. Part of the language. highest degree in the Ellis uh, uh, Cohen, in this order. By the way, Cohen is a Jewish surname, and it means priest. Priest class. Do you understand? Do you understand? Jewish priests, Catholic priests, Freemasonry, Kabbalah, Tree of Life, Kabbalah, uh, Knights Templar, Freemasonry, Jewish, 
Christian, Catholicism. It's all connected. So Nigel Jackson is the highest degree in this order. Nigel Jackson, if you don't remember, is the guy who did all of the illustrations in Christopher Warnock's books. You know, the, the books he wrote on the fixed stars. This is the same guy. He is a member of this order who did those illustrations. He drew the talismans in Christopher Warnock's um, fixed star material. I think this is the only one of these. I don't believe there's any more, but I'll read you what this order is about and why they gave this to me. You know, one of the things they wanted me to talk about was my own story, like how I did this work. And the crux of it, of, of the work that I did, you know, when I was younger for many years, my obsession was angels. Angels are the things that I have always told people over and over and over, this is what you want to use. This is what you want to be invoking. If you're looking to, to experience some of the same things that I experienced that I talk about on here, angels were the path that I followed. I had never even heard of this order before, but it says, the Elois, Elois Cohen is an esoteric Christian order founded in 1767 with its focus on establishing an invisible church independent of any earthly structure to find the path that leads to the hidden knowledge of nature in anticipation of the coming destruction of the material church. Meaning these people uh, believed that there would come a time when this information did not exist anymore like it does in like say the catholic church and the greek or orthodox church where this information is encoded in the architecture and, and these teachings were kept alive you know think about even the masons the man that i met I, he described it perfectly when he was talking about how most masons don't understand this stuff he said the way he described it and these are his words he said no, most of these people do not understand this stuff, but the way I view them is there is an incredibly valuable, powerful treasure in masonry. And the people who don't know what it is, who don't understand any of this stuff, they still serve a role. They still serve a function. He, he called them, he said, they're like, and keep in mind, this guy was from England. He had a really thick English accent. When he says things, it sounds different than I do. But he, he said, think of them as like the goblins or the guardians who may not understand the treasure, but they still protect the treasure. They protect the treasure so that it's there for people who will understand it. That's what Yeah, exactly. And they are foot soldiers. They also make it look like just a a gentleman's club type thing, fraternity, um, whatever you want to call it, right? And it's not just because the ones at the low levels don't understand what they're part of and they really don't do the work and research. Does it mean that at the higher levels, Masons are not involved in just about everything that you look into in this realm. They have a hand in just about everything you can look into, from faking space to, you know, everything you can shake a stick at. How do I know? Because it's Freemasonic coded. Numbers, symbols, signs, gestures, handshakes, it's all there. They show where they are if you have the eyes to see. It's that simple. It's that simple. I think I'm going to end the video right here. But I'm going to end it on this note. Hit the like button if you've not liked this video at the beginning. This is a reminder. Please click the like button. Like this video. 
you enjoy my content, it helps the channel, helps find the channel become fine, uh, found, not find, by people. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Hope that you learned something. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. Thanks for your support. Bye.